And that brings us to the main event, item E2, which is the energy efficiency proposal of PG&E. And so it's time for PG&E. We feel that, that the partnership we've provided to staff and to the council, you know, will, will produce real results um, in, a, in, a, in a quick, green, and less expensive fashion um, because it really doesn't put um, the county um, on the hook for anything monetarily. We will provide, um, we'll provide quite a bit of, of services through PG&E. Um, so that's basically what, what we're here to do and what we're here to partner with, um, with direction from the council. Um, that being said, we, we have offered a, we have offered a 20 hour a week staffer to the city of Nevada to help work on these programs. Um, and that individual would be, would serve as kind of a quarterback, um, pooling from what we have internally at pg &E and working with the city to locate energy efficiency programs, put together plans for the city, and also do community outreach. I think our, our first and foremost item that we want to focus on is energy efficiency. How can we make the, the city of Nevada energy efficient? And what we would really plan on doing is creating an energy task force, um, co-marketing with, with PG&E and the city of Nevada, and in, in finding different, both res, I mean residential, um, residential, both residential, city-owned, and commercial buildings and residencies that could use energy-efficient upgrades. So that would be the first task of this. We would, we would look at creating a business renewal energy audit program. We'd also look at mass marketing through different programs. What um, we would be willing to offer is our third-party contractors. And what the third-party contractors do are they provide specialized energy efficiency services. We have a number of community, community outreach programs. We would have a, we would put together energy, work, energy efficiency workshops. We'd have solar workshops. We would develop multiple, um, multiple education programs like we've done in the past. We had a solar program, a solar workshop here last year. Um, last month we had a, a Green Your City Day at Peenies Hardware. Ideally, we'd also like to set up a co-marketing with the city and do mailers to the residents of, of the city that gives descriptions of different workshops, different programs, different ways to save energy. And what that would do is that would be a co-branded uh, city PG&E item that would really engage individuals in how they can reduce their, their carbon footprint. Um, we'd also do that with, with commercial both large commercial and small commercial in elevating um, their energy efficient awareness and putting together programs that we feel would be would be extremely efficient in, in, in reaching out. We would also use our media wing within PG&E to put together op-eds, to put together uh, press releases, any information that, that, we, that we could send out to individuals that were interested in learning how to reduce this carbon footprint, we'd be absolutely dedicated to, to, to sending out something monthly that educates the public. This being said, we'd also put together a Novato specific website that would update people on local events, calendar, um, what can I do to get solar, what can I do to reduce my carbon footprint. So, we would be we'd be very um, very proactive in the community outreach. Well, I'm not sure. Um, well, I, we have a lot of residential customers here in Nevada. It's mostly a suburban city. And um, what I'm trying to get to is, in that two-year period, how many homes would you expect to do something on the energy efficiency front? What would the cost be? Who would pay for it? Is the consumer paying for this? Is PG&E paying for it? Well, it's good to a good start. Yes. So, okay. So for, what for all of the energy efficiency that you're trying to achieve in that house, or for the for the programs that are described here in the savings trap here, these are these are programs that are these are savings that are coming from the public goods charges. Um, these would be things as simple they'd be as simple as complex fluorescent light bulbs and as complex as um, 
complexes like weatherization, appliance change outs, those sorts of things. So it sort of runs the gamut of complexity. Um, as it stands here, the way it's structured is that these come from public goods charges. There is the potential for additional program penetration um, once additional financing mechanisms come on. But the way this is structured now, it does not, it, it, it sort of says, assume that the status quo exists. What conservatively can we achieve by um, more specifically targeting our programs? That's what that does. My name is Bram Miller, and I've got a fairly simple question for PG&E. That was a, a, a laudable list of generalities that you offered up, but I don't have a really good sense of what your commitment is. Are PG&E shareholders providing any of the costs here versus the public goods charge? And I think the answer is a half of the the half staff person would be contributed strictly by the shareholders, it would not be by rate payers. This would be part of PGE's uh, contribution to the program in terms of half the person. He cost that out, you know, I fully loaded. You know, I don't know what we've estimated it as, but you know, 50 to 75 uh, grand a year. Uh, the other dollars that are available on a generalized basis, uh, we have a program in front of the CPC that I think is approximately 1.8 billion for three years in terms of energy efficiency. And what we're talking about here with these various programs is trying to leverage some of those dollars proportionate to Novato's initiatives and, and needs so that uh, 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 Novato gets its fair share, if not more, of those dollars. Um, suppose the Novato City Council decided to join NEA for the energy efficiency program only, and not the CCA, because I'm told, I haven't seen this in writing, but that's a possibility. Would Novato also be able to continue doing energy efficiency partnerships with PG&E at the same time? Well, I think it depends on what, what, where Novato is putting, which basket they're putting their eggs in. So we certainly would be, be interested in continuing to work with Novato if you're putting your eggs in the basket of a, a green partnership with PG&E. The issue is really where Novato is putting its time and commitment at that point in time. If you're putting it into MEA, and we, we believe that that would not be a sustainable uh, energy efficiency program as MEA is now constituted, uh, the question would come back, or is, is Novato putting its time and effort into energy efficiency with PG&E? We were at a, uh, Ken Stevens, 32 Bauer Drive, Novato. We were at a meeting here in this very room about a month ago, and uh, Council Member Eklund asked PG&E to produce a written proposal Am I to understand that it's just now coming up? They were promising in a week. It's just now coming up. Is that true? Did it over? At any rate, there was a number of speakers that was warning were warning everybody that PG&E is going to drag their feet until it becomes too late. You know, right now we have what eight days before it's too late to join without a penalty. And it's coming to fruition. PG&E is dragging their feet. And to follow up on that, we have an opportunity here to change the way we get our energy. PG&E has wonderful ideas about, you know, conserving energy, changing out light bulbs, giving fares at PE and all that stuff. And I applaud them for it. But that's mostly stuff they should be doing anyway. We have an opportunity to change the way we buy energy. PG&E is not going to change the way they generate energy. Now, they'll throw up a few solar panels and stuff, but they're not going to open up their dams. They aren't going to shut down their nuclear power plants. It's just not going to happen. This public goods charge, um, you said that, um, Ontario, you said that every three years an agreement is made with the county and you give them some money. Um, and is it uh, based on so much money per city? You know, how, how is that money that you give to the county developed? Is it based on um, the net population, the energy use? Okay. I think the, the money is not directly related to population necessarily or energy use. It, it's it's for, for, for a smaller city, they will receive a smaller portion. For a Nevada, Central Nevada local government partnership, you will receive an allocation that would likely be somewhat in proportion to your your size in relation to Marin, but as you go forward, that that portion that you'll receive would be directly related to the program, uh, the program savings. So, your question is well, because basically what happens is that 
that we give the Marin Energy Watch, I believe it's called the LGP that we have with the county, we give them a certain amount of money. And that, I believe the county, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris or Ontario, um, spends it on different programs throughout the county. Has any city um, asked for that uh, public goods charge money to come to the city instead of the county? We've seen we've seen larger um, local government partnerships separated into smaller ones as 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 cities or a collection of cities see that their that the allocation of funds might not be as appropriate for a larger geographic area. That's that's not it's not uh, necessarily unique. But we incur, we have to make sure that that's the most useful, the most equ not equitable, the most efficient utilization of those funds. It's not. The city can't come in and say we want the money just so we have local control. They have you understand that this isn't a formula allocation based on geography or population. And to the extent that a, a program is countywide or even broader than countywide and shows economies of scale and efficiencies, then it would it's natural that that, that could show better savings, bigger bang for the buck based on that broader program. So from the county standpoint, to the extent that the county basically says, look, we're we're gonna be more efficient and effective. Uh, than a smaller uh, local government at providing these savings, it's a bit of a competitive issue. We, we really look at it, what's the biggest bang for the buck from the standpoint of the savings? But if we enter into this local government partnership thing, which is going to require PUC approval on 1A, is that the precursor for us to say, hey, look at, we, we, we would like to look, uh, get some of that public goods money? So that then we can do um, like a, a loan program for energy efficiency. Well, or I think I think there's a couple of steps involved before that. Uh -huh. I think first off, we, we would we would we would want the city to sit down with the county, and and as we would come in as moderators and let the two of you discuss how that money is being allocated. Is it being allocated in your city, and how and if so, how much, and what is the energy saving results? It's it's absolutely the call of, of the city to to put the to put the county on the ropes of basically saying what what are your what are what have you been doing with this money and how they re what what results have become of them. It sounds delightful to listen to, <clears throat> but when I sit here and I think about it, I think of item number one. Item number one is going to achieve 500, 5, 500 megawatt hours per year. Um, Reduction, and I want to know how specifically that's going to be achieved. And I want to know on an end, a year by year basis when we're getting those reductions from what sectors of, the, of your ratepayers so that we have something that we can track and check off. Okay? And they're on target. And I want to know what that program costs and what percentage of it's paid by PGE, um, what funding source of PGE is being used to pay for it, how much is expected to be paid by customers, how much is expected to be paid by Nevada, either through soft costs or direct costs or whatever. No work program here. There's nothing to measure. There's nothing to hold their feet to the fire over. If it were MEA sitting here, I'd say the exact same thing. There is no contract here. There's no obligation on their part to us, and there's no penalty, as you pointed out, to them for not doing it. I think I'd like to, to say just a very quick thing about the energy efficiency programs under CCA. Um, the law uh, that was passed in 2002 provides for community choice aggregators to obtain the public goods charge money. Um, they, there is a provision for them to apply to administer uh, the um, cost effective energy efficiency. And that's actually available to any party, not just community choice. So, Ms. Eklund, if you wanted to get that money and give out zero interest loans, you could do that right now, even without joining MEA. Yeah. And I think that's what you really need to look at because this company has not done that since 1982. And they have resisted every attempt by ratepayer advocates like myself to get them to do that. Their residential programs are very small. Um, one of the reasons why you're not seeing much in the way of energy efficiency programs from PG&E is because their residential budget is basically just handing out CFLs at these fairs that they put together. 
and very little else. And local government partnerships, in fact, were not allowed to do residential programs. They're only doing commercial programs. And when you're talking about you, this pretty little picture that uh, Mr. Werner painted about how it would be when you're a partner with them, um, I'd like to just tell you what happened at the last round of partnerships um, in the 0608 programs. Um, the county submitted its proposal in May, P along with other local government partnerships. PG&E promised to have meetings with the county, and they were supposed to have the programs approved by the end of the year. They had one meeting in August. They canceled the next meeting, and nobody, none of the partners, heard from PG&E until February of the year the programs were supposed to begin. In February, PG&E informed the partners that their budgets were slashed by 60%. They had no say in that. They had no say about what they could do in their programs anymore because PG&E just tossed their proposals in the trash. And they didn't sign those partnerships until September, late September. In other words, they missed the entire summer program when a lot of people are interested in doing energy efficiency. I, I guess that's why, you know, I asked the question about the enforceability and um, what type of uh, measures can we put in here in order to make sure that there's progress because it, if there isn't progress, then um, I, I would have some concerns about that. Um, but I, um, I personally, there, there's, I think, I think I've mentioned most of the items that I would want to see um, added to this chart. Um, And, uh, and also I think that we need to have some discussion about the enforceability. Um, and uh, and I think we need to get, uh, and take it to city council and see what they have to say about it. Okay, well I don't think it's ready for the city council. 